Imagine I'm giving away six vacations. One to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. One to Miami, Florida. One to London, England. One to Washington, D.C. One to Shanghai, China. And one to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But because I'm a game theorist, I'm not going to make this easy. Instead, we're going to have to divide those vacations between you and an opponent. Your preferences over those vacation spots are as follows. You most prefer Philadelphia. You then prefer Pittsburgh. After that is Washington. Coming in fourth is Shanghai. Fifth, we have Miami. And finally, your least favorite place to go will be London. Your opponent has different preferences. Their favorite vacation spot is Pittsburgh. After that, Shanghai. After that, London. In fourth, Miami. In fifth, Washington. And finally, Philadelphia. You are going to divide these via a draft. You will have the first, third, and fifth picks. Your opponent will have the second, fourth, and sixth. Here's the puzzle. In what order should you draft these cities? And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to apply backward induction to the problem. That's a topic I cover in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. In essence, you should think about how the end of the draft will play out, and use that information to inform what your earlier picks should be. Are you ready for the solution? You and your opponent may have an initial inclination to just try drafting according to what your preferences are. That would mean with the first pick, you choose Philadelphia, making it impossible for your opponent to get Philadelphia. Then your opponent chooses Pittsburgh, making it impossible for you to get Pittsburgh. Then you take DC, removing that from the board for them. Then they take Shanghai, denying that for you. Then you take Miami, and forcing them to have London as their last pick. This results in an okay outcome for you. You get your first, third, and fifth favorite choices. But then again, you have the first, third, and fifth picks. So you are always guaranteed to get at least that. Thus. The question remains whether you can do better. And moreover, can you do better if your opponent is thinking about this strategically rather than engaging in the same sort of naive play that we assumed that you would do here? The answer is that you can. And in fact, there is a specific algorithm on how you should go about doing this that will always work regardless of what your preferences are or what your opponent's preferences are. Here's how it works. As the hint implied, we must apply backward induction to this problem. That means that the first thing that we should think about is the last overall pick. Your opponent has that final pick. And the way the algorithm works is we take that player with the final pick and we look at the least favorite choice that the other player has in this case, you. In other words, with the final pick, your opponent is going to choose London, England as their slot. The reason that this is going to be the final overall pick when the players are playing optimally is that your opponent has no need to choose London any earlier than the final pick. That's because you are going to have that as your least favorite option and as such, 
you're not going to draft it under any circumstances unless you were to have the final pick, which you don't. Thus, choosing it any earlier is a waste of a vital resource for your opponent. Now we can think about the previous pick, which is fifth overall and belongs to you. But like before, instead of basing this pick on your preferences, we're going to base it on your opponents. Specifically, after removing the final overall pick from the board, we're going to look at what your opponent's least favorite choice is that remains. Here, it's Philadelphia. And thus, with the fifth pick, you should select Philadelphia. Like before, the reasoning is straightforward. There is simply no need to take it any earlier. Your opponent views it as an unfavorable option. Thus, they have no reason to snipe it away from you earlier in the draft, and as a consequence, you can use those earlier picks to secure something that you might not otherwise be able to. As a consequence, even though Philadelphia is your favorite choice, you should save it for your final pick, the fifth overall. From here, the algorithm oscillates back and forth. With the fourth pick, your opponent will look at your preference list and choose the option that is at the bottom of what remains. Here, that means taking Miami. The idea is that Philadelphia is an unattractive option for your opponent, and London can be saved for later. In turn, Miami is the thing that he needs to fight over the least, and as a consequence, he can save it for the fourth pick rather than using the second pick on it. Switching perspectives. For your third pick, you look at the bottom of your opponent's list of what remains, and make that your selection. Here, that means drafting Washington. The intuition is just like it was before. If we accept that Miami, Philadelphia, and London should go later in the draft, then there is no need to select Washington any earlier. After all, of what remains, it ranks lowest according to your opponent. In turn, there's simply no need to waste your first pick on it. For the last two options, your opponent looks at the bottom of your list and makes that the second overall pick, in this case, Shanghai. And with your first overall pick, you select Pittsburgh. Interestingly, if you draft strategically, even if your opponent does the same, then you end up better off than in a world where you both had drafted naively. That's because you get your first, second, and third favorite outcomes. You literally cannot do better than that. The key move, of course, was sniping Pittsburgh with the first overall selection. But as I said earlier, the crazy thing about this algorithm is that it works regardless of the lengths of the two lists and regardless of what the preference ordering is between the two players. A strategic player with the final pick should look at the bottom of their opponent's preference ordering and never draft that thing until the very last round. Then the other player looks at the bottom of the first player's list and never drafts that selection any earlier than the second to last pick overall. And then you repeat that process going all the way up. In other words, there's nothing inherently special about these two lists that I gave you. You can implement that algorithm on anything. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.